a big, huge welcome to everyone. Thank you for getting your energies together this morning and um, being willing to dive right back into redistricting after quite an intense election. <laughs> so thank you everyone very much. Um, and I'm excited you're here because we need every single engaged person to make change <laughs> so that uh, future elections also go perhaps more smoothly. So lots at stake. Um, today, as I mentioned, we're gonna talk about the People's Map Commission. And then in November, the rest of November and December, we're really gonna be assessing and retooling. So I'll let you know how you can participate in those steps too at the end of our call today. Um, so I'll give you a little status update. Ann Leek, who is the head of our legislative team, will give us an update on the elections. We'll have a little discussion time. Then we'll hear from Anne Marie and Tony. An uh, update from Carlene on what's happening across Wisconsin with Fair Maps. And then I'll talk about some next steps and what's ahead. So we'll fill the next 75 minutes with lots of good stuff. Um, I'll just take a moment to talk about what has happened in the last four or five months. A lot of you have been on this journey with us since last summer, and a lot has happened thanks to um, everyone that's been part of this project. The referendum passed in the city of Barron and Dunn County, which is in our area. We've created a lot of resources which have been useful to us in the last months, but are also going to be extremely valuable in the coming year letters to the editors, videos, cartoons, lots of ways of trying to reach out to people um, based on how people like to receive their information. So there's a, a variety of ways that we can engage. Um, we've started conversations with elected officials. A lot of them were reelected. So it's very great that we have already started the conversation with them because we'll be continuing it. Um, we've started engaging with the People's Map Commission and November is the third congressional district. So good timing on that. And then January is the seventh. So we'll continue intensely engaging with the People's Map Commission. And then I hope all of us feel, I know it's definitely been the case for me that I've just learned a lot in the last few months. So I feel like I'm going into 2021, the intensity of a lot of things that are going to happen. Uh, with a much better framework understanding um, of the situation that we're in than I did say five, six months ago. So hopefully um, all of us have, have been able to absorb a lot of new information over the course of the months. And, and as we go into next year, we'll be powered up with that. So I just wanna give a huge thank you to everyone who um, gave a lot of themselves, a lot of their time, their thinking, um, to this project in, in 2020, we had the video team. I see Bob is on here. Um, so thanks a lot for everyone that participated with that. Um, the writing team, Douglas led that and a lot of you participated in that team with Douglas. And I know there's still things coming out. Sarah's working on a great FAQ. Um, and so that's really valuable because a lot of those letters to the editor can be kind of tweaked, repurposed, reused um, in different places. And that's tremendously helpful. Um, so we won't be spending time. We don't need to spend as much time on that moving forward. We can we can use a lot of the resources we've already developed. Um, Laureen, big, huge thank you for leadership in Dunn County. Um, the referendum passed, as we'll hear from Leek, um, uh, from Ann Leek. But um that uh, Lorraine spent many many hours and and corralled troops for signs and farmers market and um that made a, a huge impact i'm sure in educating voters about the referendum um and put together with her team the great resources of knowing who signed the fair maps pledge and who didn't um and that was a great tool to have and um also started conversations with all the legislators and then Ellen Oaks and I um, worked on the events team, which was really fun. We had a great event in Dunn County and um, hopefully that also kind of set a precedent for things that we can do in other counties as other counties have referendums as well. So big, huge thank you. A lot of gratitude to all of you. Your energies were not in vain 
and we'll continue building on everything that we've that we've done so far. So thank you, thank you, everyone. <laughs> Good work. So I don't want to go into too much detail here, but just as an overview, um, this month is the third congressional district hearing. And so we'll learn more about that from Anne Marie and Tony here coming up. Um, but that includes Pierce, Dunn, Pepin, and Buffalo counties, which are in our, our Western Wisconsin area. And so we encourage anyone living in those counties to, um, to participate in that this month. And we'll tell you exactly how you can do that. Um, I'd like to take December to kind of reset our project. So our goals for 2021 are, are different than what, you know, what we had for 2020, which was really based on this election, which is in the past now. Um, so we'll be looking at that. And I would love to have conversations with all of you in November and December to see how you'd like to participate in that moving forward. And January, we'll dive back in. So we don't have a, a monthly meeting in December, but in January, we'll start that again. And then January is also the People's Map Commission 7th Congressional District hearing. And so uh, counties in, our, in Western Wisconsin, uh, St. Croix, Polk, and Barron can participate in that. So just mark that on your calendars as a heads up if you live in those three counties. And then February to April, we're really gonna be ramping up um, for the things that are going to come in 2021, like the law being introduced um, in the legislatures um, and the Republican leadership introducing their map, the People's Map Commission map being ready. So the beginning of next year, we'll be really prepping for that and strategizing on how we're gonna be able to have the greatest impact when those things happen late spring, early summer into summer. Um, so that's kind of what we're, what we're looking at right now for the coming months. Any questions about that real quick? Any comments? Nope, all right, I will pass the floor to Anne then, who's gonna update us on election results. Um, okay, well, um, I, I feel like uh, some of our efforts were in vain because as you see, uh, the no's won um, and they won by, I didn't put the percentages in, but almost every uh, election was a kind of a 60, 40% split. So uh, I'm, I'm pretty disappointed by this. Um, the only uh, Republican on this list who would talk to us was Gay Magnifici. Um, the other ones ignored everything that we sent to them or phone calls or emails. We never heard back from these people. So um, I, I guess maybe the happy piece of this is that uh, the Republicans in the state were not able to get their supermajority. Um, so we still have the ability to um, fight maybe a little more effectively the fair maps issue, but this was very disappointing. So that's my report. I'm disappointed. Uh, gerrymandering obviously works very well in Western Wisconsin. I just want to add one thing that Jeff Smith yeah. did tell me that Clint Moses had um, said that he would support the, the um, legislation. So I'm going to be reaching out to Jeff and just find out how how he got. Well, I actually already sent a text to Jeff, and I haven't heard back from him. His daughter's birthday was yesterday, um, but I will um, I'll follow up on that because that was that was what he said. That was the only silver lining he could see. Um, perhaps. Well, although I I did contact Clint myself, and he never responded. So I, I hope that's true because I had heard that as well, but he did not respond to me about that. So. We'll hope that he's not pressured, overly pressured um, as a, a new legislator um, into following lockstep with the rest of them. So, um, but, and, and Carlene, you probably can, can uh, share this too. Um, ha happily, all the referendums did pass in the 60 and 70% ranges. So it does show that there are Republicans in the state who support ending gerrymandering, even though our legislators um, are not listening to us at this point. I'm also looking into each one of these counties to see um, how they voted in, um, in the assembly races in those counties so that we can get a comparison of how they voted on the referendum 
and how they voted um, you know, on the assembly race. And quite honestly, it would be really, it would be telling if they voted for the person who didn't support and voted for the referendum, because it would be a message that says, people want this, they're voting a, a party way, but this is what they want. So whoever you are, you need to be listening to that. So I'll have that, that data for you soon. That's, that's a lot, lot more digging, got to go into every county commissioner and, and some, some counties have four or five representatives, as you know, and so you got to put all that together. So I, I'm not finished on that yet. Okay, I, yeah, I have, um, aside from these lovely numbers and this success, I have nothing else legislatively to update, but I'm looking forward to um, the People's Maps Commission to see how they can help us move forward on this. Yeah. So I can talk just a little bit about these counties. Um, Washera, Rusk, Jefferson, um, Dunn, Adams counties are all pretty conservative counties. Some tend to be a little more purple than others. Bayfield is a pretty blue county. Door, very purple county. Kenosha, very purple county. Um, so, and Iowa, pretty blue county. So you can see that th this these referendums pass in, in all kinds of um, political environments. And then this village of Wim Point, we just found out about. Apparently, it's a very wealthy, pretty conservative village near the city of Racine in Racine County, and it passed there by 72%. So one more piece of evidence for how nonpartisan this is. This is Betty Crook, and I can report from Crawford County that Crawford County really was overwhelmingly uh, supported Republican candidates, but it did pass the referendum by 67%. Thank you. We might have the percentage wrong here, 70. Um, some of you may remember from 2018, we had a graphic um, that showed how many votes um, Democrats had and how many seats they yes. won. And there was quite a discrepancy. I can't get into so, my computer. I can't make that lady talk in this stupid, stupid thing. Can you help me? So we, um, Not me. Muted, it's just um, so we uh, wanted to look a look of uh, take a look at what that would be like for this last election, and we may be these numbers may not be quite right. Uh, Carlene said she might have some different numbers, but the same kind uh, of yes, theme as of gerrymandering, of course. Oh, <laughs> I don't care. I just need to get in. Um, the same kind of um, theme happened here too, where you know the Democrats got a fairly high percentage of votes, but that wasn't reflected in the number of seats that they won. So we'll, we'll have more firm information on this once all the uh, election results are final. Dun, dun. Um, so I think to, to summarize a little bit what happened with um, the election on a local level, Basically, we have really good evidence that gerrymandering is working well in Wisconsin the way it was intended to. <laughs> and that's why we need to be here. If um, our candidates had won, there would be um, no real good reason for us to be doing this work. But we, in case we were wondering whether it was important or not, we now have further proof. So um, there we go. Uh, and I will pass it off to Douglas to have a little discussion time. Thanks, Janelle. So we have um, an opportunity to really applaud the, the work that has been done. And I see it as a matter of turnout. And you know, when you look at these percentages in contrast from 2016, and I don't have all the data up here, but if you look back to as far as 88, this was a record year. Um, 2004, also a re-election year, was the, the maximum in terms of percentage voters turnout. It was 73%. 2015, 
we were at 72. Um, it went as low as 58% in 96, in terms of percentage turnout, but we did set a record of 3.2 million voters. And um, as you get into the detail of this, um, what I'm noticing is that um, it's kind of interesting to me that turnout in, in the Milwaukee area was 84%. <laughs> That's pretty remarkable. 84%. They turned out 243,000 votes. And coincidentally, the difference between Clinton's uh, voting in uh, the number of votes she received in 2016 versus Biden was about the same, 248,000. Um, lots of other interesting data there you can look at. But in the next few minutes, what we'd like in these breakout groups is to just express something you're really feeling good about and something you're frustrated with, but rather than um, elaborating, just one word each. And that will then give us kind of a sense in our groups for how we can discuss this. And we'll only have about eight minutes, so. Um. So it is with great pleasure that I welcome Anne Marie and Tony, both commissioners from the People's Map Commission to our call today. We are very fortunate to have Anne Marie as part of our leadership team. So that's um, been tremendous and um, very proud that she's a commissioner. And um, we had the pleasure of meeting Tony a little while ago, a few months ago when he agreed to um, be a Republican voice on one of our videos that we made. And so really nice to welcome him back to our group now. So I'll pass the floor over to Anne-Marie and, and Tony. Thanks, Janelle. Um, I will lead, I'll get us started. Um, Tony, I don't see your little, your face there. It's a pleasure to have met Tony and to be working with him as a fellow commissioner. And um, I'll give some comments and Tony, we can, you can kind of jump in or, or wait till I get closer to the end and, and give your um, additional views. Um, yeah, I'll wait till you're done. Okay, thanks. Um, so the People's Map Commission charge, everybody here is really pretty aware of it, is to prepare maps for the legislator to consider. Okay, we're an advisory commission. We have really no authority. There's nothing in the world that makes the legislators have to listen to us. So we're aware of that and that is a huge issue. But what our charge is to prepare maps um, for the congressional state and state assembly districts. So three sets of maps. And while we're preparing these, we're also listening to the public um, because everyone clearly wants fair maps. Um, all the referendums that have been passed show that, um, but what is a fair map and what does that look like? Um, and so what that's what we are having our hearings for is to get that feedback from the community. In this group and um, with Carlene and everyone here that these grassroots organizations that are participating in the process and the testimony, it, it's critical. And we all, all the commissioners thank everyone for their um, attention and support there. Because we're doing this in a very transparent process, which is different than the way it's being done now and has been done in the past. Um, so all our conversations uh, and any decision that the commissioners are making is all being done in a very transparent process during um, a commission meeting. And lastly, our charge as commissioners are really to understand the mapping process very thoroughly and learn from experts um, to fully understand uh, the ins and outs of it, the pluses and minuses of different procedures and to do what's right for the people of Wisconsin. Okay, next slide. So our process is to hold at least eight hearings, one in each congressional district. Um, it's set through November and as the um, new dates come up, we'll let everyone know. And uh, just so everyone's aware that we're supposed to hold, we'll hold at least eight, but that doesn't mean only eight. You know, As we get closer to the map drawing process, 
the commissioners may decide that we might need more meetings um, and get more input on uh, map proposals. So also we are, oh, can you go back? Yeah. Um, so a lot of our work right now is in the study and the evaluation. Um, and then finally, once we learn more, we have to determine what criteria we want to use for the map um, and the actual process, like what software do you use, what data sets come into the process of drawing the maps. And then once you get your maps, what sort of metrics are the proper ones for evaluating that, you know, you can look at different metrics that will assess uh, maybe gerrymandering, um, imbalance. Um, and so those are the sorts of things that we all need to um, decide. And we also uh, are developing a report to include recommendations for a map drawing process. So as we're going along, we're trying to document um, some of the decisions we're faced with and um, the background so that at the end, there will be a report that will be um, available to anyone um, for recommendations that the commissioners will finally make on if there was another group to come in another 10 years, this is how we would think that they should perform. Next slide. So map criteria, um, the Governor's Act 66 um, lists the first part of all those. Of course, it needs to be free from partisan bias and advantage. Um, we want to avoid diluting uh, minority votes, uh, including the practice of hacking and cracking, which I think everyone here is well aware of those practices um, and seeing them maybe in their own communities. Uh, the map criteria has to be compact geographically uh, as much as you can, and it has to be contiguous. You can't have big holes in districts where they, uh, the districts are in physically different locations. Um, we want to avoid splitting any wards and municipalities and maintain traditional communities of interest. And, and so what is a definition of a community of interest? One is um, it's an area with recognized similarity of interest. It could be racial, it could be ethnic, economic, cultural, geographic. And that's one of the considerations that the um, commissioners are really looking at now. Like how do you define that? How do you assess it um, and what is important for Wisconsin. So this is um, one of the things that we're grappling with anyway at the moment. And there's also additional criteria to consider that are not in Act 66 are competitive maps and maps that are responsive to changes when um, a community decides that they want to um, switch from one party to the other or, or leadership, will the maps allow that change to happen? Uh, so those are other criteria. Next slide. So we, we need to look at the evaluation metrics for our maps once we generate them, because you won't just generate one map. It's an iterative process. You'll generate one map and and look at the data and then maybe go back and tweak it. And, and that's one of the things we're understanding. There's a lot of back and forth um, to the map making. So we need to figure out what criteria we're gonna look at. There's the efficiency gap, which um, basically measures wasted votes. Um, and that's one that's commonly used. I'm not gonna go into the details of all that here. Um, you know, other metrics that are commonly used are um, the compactness. There's different ways to measure compactness, um, area and perimeters and things like that. Um, so we're learning all those metrics and um, that's all I have to say about that at the moment. Um, next slide. So the lessons that we have learned um, to date after our first two hearings um, and listening to the experts is that when it comes to actually drawing the maps, the first thing we have to look at is um, accommodating the Constitutional and Voting Rights Act requirements, which means that the population has to be equal for the various areas and that you need to um, 
protect minorities to make sure that their votes are um, not diluted. In the state of Wisconsin, that Voting Rights Act um, is, you have to take that into account in, in the Milwaukee area, but the rest of um, the state doesn't really have um, any Voting Rights Act requirements um, that we have to pay close attention to. We've also learned that, you know, the criteria for map creation, you can't just prioritize it. You know, one easy way to do it is look at all those criteria, which is the most important. Is compactness the most important? And you go through, and when you get your area, you just check it off. But um, from all the experts say, no, it's not gonna be that easy. Um, it's a give and take, like I said, an iterative process. Um, and it really requires human input. Um, you can't just have a computer have some sort of specifications and spit out your maps um, for you. Interestingly, we learned that weird shapes don't always indicate gerrymandering or something that is bad. There's a maybe a newly classic example around Chicago that there's this area around Chicago that kind of looks like a big horseshoe with, you know, part of it is a real skinny line. It's actually a road connecting the uh, top and the bottom of this curve around Chicago, but it was joined purposely to get the uh, Latinx and the African-American voters together so that they could have a fair representation and have a representative that would listen to them. Um, and then uh, communities of interest, that's, uh, the experts are talking a lot about that too. So the next slide. The, the testimony which people have been given and we're very grateful for everyone showing up. We've had, I don't know, maybe 20, 15 um, to 20 people showing up. Um, what we've heard is what we all know is gerrymandering has led to non-responsive representation, polarization in the legislators because the legislators are coming from extremes and you're not getting as many moderate people um, elected. Um, and and we can see that, I think everybody sees that um, in their interactions with legislators um, and the people aren't listening to them. Uh, the legislators just ignore uh, their constituents um, for the most part and that there's lots of non-competitive and uncontested uh, races out there. As far as possible communities of interest, um, one person brought up a group, uh, it's a lakeshore community that stretched across different districts. And it was very important for them to protect um, the lakeshore and, and different pollutants and things that they wanted um, some regulation put in. And it was very difficult for them because they were um, uh, you know, they didn't have one voice that they could go to. Uh, so that might be a, an area where you might want to not break these two different uh, areas into the different districts, even if they were in different um, counties. Um, the community suggestions on what makes a fair map. We've had a number of people talk about the Iowa plan as an example. We have had some people um, say that just use an algorithm and don't use any human influence. And we've also had some people um, suggest that we keep counties intact uh, for the county governance. Next slide. So this, this is your support that everybody has been given. Um, please continue, Carlene, thanks again for organizing people. Um, we need the public testimony and mainly what we're looking for are the local effects of gerrymandering in their community, communities of interest in their area, and any um, process recommendations on the actual map drawing itself. We want to continue to build transparency into the drawing process and the proposed maps. This, the commission has um, not made any decisions on um, how best to do this, but we do know that we need um, the support of the community 
in order to encourage the legislators um, to look at the maps. We know they could just throw them away after all this um, effort everyone went into, but with all the referendum, I think there's enough groundswell of the public and the community out there, but we're asking legislators to give up power. So why would they want to do that? You know, there needs to be a great outpouring um, of the community to encourage their representatives um, to look at it. So how we're going to best do that as we move along, I think Janelle brought that up. That'll be something that groups will have to be discussing after the first of the year. Um, so next, oh, the hearings. So the hearings have been kind of interesting for anybody who's kind of nerdish and wants to know about map drawing and the details, um, especially the last one from May 29th. You can go on and review the um, hearing the experts, Ken Mayer and Keith Gaddy. They were both um, gave um, amicus briefs in the Whitford case. One um, is for the Republican side and one for the Democrat side. And they gave a lot of good suggestions on the methodology um, for map, nonpartisan map drawing. Uh, so that's a good one to listen to. Upcoming on the 19th um, is, as we said, the third congressional district meeting. It'll start at 5.30. The speakers are Moon Duchin from Tufts. She's a math professor and is gonna talk about tools for mapping and defining communities of interest. Uh, I watched a video of her. She, she's very engaging. Um, I think that'll be a good talk. And Jordan um, Ellenberg from UW is going to integrate math with gerrymandering at a level that we could all understand, it, it said. So that will be um, very interesting for us on the commission to listen to. And we do want to acknowledge that the uh, third congressional district and our group would mainly be um, folks in Pierce, uh, Dunn and Pepin counties. Although there are 18 counties um, in the uh, we don't have the date for the, De well, December 9th is the next date for Milwaukee, and then CD7, um, we don't have the date, but as soon as we get it, uh, we'll make sure everyone knows, because that it would be St. Croix, Polk, and Barron counties. And the next slide. So this is just came last night, thanks to uh, Dr. Vetter for forwarding this information on. There's a new, um, well, it's happened in July that uh, a group, the Wisconsin Institute for Law and Scott Jensen filed for a rule change so that any um, redistricting lawsuits would have to go directly to the Wisconsin Supreme Court and not go through the normal channels of the, of the uh, trial courts and review by the Court of Appeals. So it's kind of, they're trying to ram any changes or, or again, however they do the maps right to the Supreme Court because everyone expects the maps to be challenged. Um, Joan Schwartz is a member of the League of Women Voters in Dane County. And she will be one of the speakers at a league meeting on Thursday at 7 p.m. And I'm sure she will tell us how we can best um, work um, to make our voices heard on fighting this change. So I have something here, Marie, on that one. Pardon? Um, uh, yeah, I was on that call this last week, and so we knew that this this was coming from Scott Jensen and Wisconsin Institute for Law and Liberty. Ironically, the day after the election is when the Supreme Court announced when the hearing on this will be. The actual hearing will be on January 14th, but any public comment, and these are not amicus briefs. These are, this is comments by uh, groups or individuals who have strong feelings about what should be happening with redistricting have to be submitted by November 30th. So, um, Actually, right after this meeting, I will be in another meeting with Jeff Mandel and Sachin Chetta from Fair Elections Project, and also um, um, a couple of our, the comms director for Wisconsin Voices and a couple of other folks trying to put together uh, something that will be helpful to individuals and to groups who want to, to uh, submit comment 
to the not necessarily what to say, but the kinds of things that the court will be looking for in public comment around these things. So I will definitely, once we have those, I will be forwarding those to Janelle. So anybody in this group who wants to write those can, and I strongly um, encourage you to, to attend the league event as well, because um, the, the league is part of this, this uh, trying to make sure that we are we are answering with a with a strong and unified voice around why this is this shouldn't the rules change shouldn't happen. And just for a little perspective, the last request for rules change around redistricting came in um, 2000. I it, it took in 2003 the rules change request was submitted. It took six years for the committee that was looking at it to make a decision. They made the decision in 2009 and what they decided was it was not their place. So it's kind of interesting that this is happening and it's happening in a really truncated fashion. Um, the court granted is very, very different. Although um, the current um, Supreme Court um, head chief justice was one of those who said, this is far too political for the courts and the, and it's on tape. Wisconsin I has it on tape. She and uh, one other justice um, both said that. So uh, stay tuned. That's all just to say, stay tuned. Excellent. And I did, I put the um, link for registering for that in the chat. So just click on that. It'll take you to where you need to be to register for that. And I'll put it in the follow-up email too but it's this Thursday. Um, and if anyone from this group would like to put together, you can, you can submit something as an individual, but if you'd like to submit it as part of a group, um, send me an email today, tomorrow, um, definitely by the end of the week. And then I'll, put, I'll help organize a group. Um, if there would be like four or five of us that would like to get together and, and write something up together, it's part of WWNBD, that would be awesome. So just drop me a note. Um, hello at piercecountygro.org. So yeah, great. And I'll keep going because I want to make sure we have time for questions and answers. I'm going to stop sharing now. Um, was that, Anne-Marie, did you have anything else? Uh, no, I was just going to turn it over to Tony um, for Perfect. his comments and then any sure. other time for Q&A. Yeah, thanks. I mean, just a couple of quick comments. I mean, one of the things you said, Anne Marie, is that at the end of this process, we'll be writing a report that will be published. And I think that's going to be a very important thing. And I just want to give a shout out to Anne Marie because she is the one that's uh, kind of organizing that report already. Uh, so she's doing a great job for the commission in that way. Um, you know, but just a couple of comments about the commission. I mean, um, I think the governor, his uh, original act, has done a good job creating a diverse commission. Uh, we have school teachers, dean of students, librarian, doctors, administrators, community activists on the commission. We have multiple different ethnicities represented on the commission, Latino, Native Americans, Black. So you know, I think it is a cross section representing everybody's interest. And the emphasis uh, at the level of the commission meetings is look, we are going to be nonpartisan. We are going to be extremely neutral in all of this. We're going to be fair. Uh, our goal, like uh, Anne-Marie said, is to try to bring back some competitiveness and therefore hopefully in the long run some moderation in government and a very open and transparent process throughout. And then another thing that's been emphasized to us is the need at the end to have consensus in our decisions to, uh, to have the commission you know, discuss, disagree, but then in the end, have consensus. And so that's one of our goals. Um, so I think the big issue is uh, at the end of this, like Anne Marie said, we'll have maps, they'll be fair, they'll be nonpartisan, but they can also be ignored. So how do we use those maps and how do we use the report that we're gonna generate going forward? Uh, that's a question for the Carlene Beecham's of the world and other people who want to advocate for this. And I think that's a very hard thing, but I think that's where we'll be at the end. So I'm going to stop there. I think, you know, I think Janelle's going to have time for questions or something. 
Yeah, feel free to just unmute yourself and ask a question if you have one for the commissioners or um, put it in the chat and we can read it for you. Got a question. Yeah, sorry. The other thing I just wanted to say, being with these experts is an amazing experience. I mean, these are truly experts, uh, highly experienced highly knowledgeable. I don't know what Anne Marie feels like, but it's almost like sitting in a classroom. You're, you know, we're very inexperienced in these people, very knowledgeable in the world. So I would congratulate the governor's office there as well. They're really trying hard to set this up as we're getting a lot of experts and a lot of uh, input from the public. So that can never be taken away from this process. Awesome, Terry. Uh, just a question, Tony, you know, first of all, thank you for, uh, for, for being a part of this group. When I look at that list that we have uh, of, you know, people that support it, legislators and those who don't, all the Republicans don't other than the one, what, what can we do? Because I think that's the key here is to, to get someone like you to say, you know, this is not a nonpartisan issue. How do we get folks from the other side, I guess, to, to buy it? Because I think that's, I mean, that's where we have to get the support, correct? Right. I mean, extremely difficult. I mean, I think it comes down to uh, where the money's coming from. You know, the money's coming from the extreme right and filters through. So to run elections, these people are beholden. These, I think there are some Republicans, conservatives who would listen and would be willing to go for nonpartisan redistricting, but their leadership is saying no. So how do we beat that? You know, I think it's extremely difficult. Um, I think just more and more grassroots groundswell uh, demands. And I think it may, you know, this, we're probably going to have a map drawn by the legislature. Hopefully the governor will be able to veto it. I say that because there's a discussion of, will the legislature try to pass something, uh, what's the right word, where they bypass the governor. There's discussion of that too. By resolution. By resolution, there's discussion of that too. But you know, in the instance where the governor is able to veto, then it goes to the courts. That may help in terms of uh, getting maps drawn that are less gerrymandered. So. I guess patience over time that this may come back in 2022 and 2024 where it reaches a point where there is enough moderates in there to pass something, you know, it, uh, uh, so I, I don't have a great answer for you, Terry, that um, right now, I think anybody that's a moderate on the right is hamstrung by the, the need to win in primaries and the, the lack of money flow. And, to, and it seems like there's so much party loyalty among voters that as soon as uh, the leadership says vote this way, a lot of voters tend to without thinking through everything. All of those are barriers. I'm um, going to add just a little bit to that, Terry. And so one of the things that we <laughs> knew coming into this election season is that um, Public pressure is really our only key right now, and that we need to, we, we know that, um, we knew going into this election that the results in the assembly in particular were likely to be very much the way they were before, and that um, those folks are very likely to draw maps that look a lot like what we have now. Um, so part of the people's, the reason for the People's Maps Commission is to have a comparison to have a comparison about what the process can look like. That's why it's so important to have more people involved in the process um, to create a different set of maps based on criteria that the public has input to. So if you know moderate Republicans, it's really important to have them testify. And, and I know that Emory and Tony know that there were a couple of moderate Republicans who testified in each of the last two um, to hearings and identified themselves as such. So that's another important thing so that it doesn't look like it's all one side saying, we got cheated, we got cheated and, and you know playing into that narrative of sore loser because we know that the state is mostly purple. 
And so being able to show in how these referendum pass, how people voted, but what they want for maps, that's an important piece. Um, and I, I think it's also important to know why we don't want these to go directly to the Supreme Court. It's not just that the Supreme Court has a conservative bent. It's also that the Supreme Court is not a fact-finding body, right? They get things after they've gone to this court and appealed to this court and appealed to this court. And all those are the places where there's testimony and fact-finding. When it gets to the Supreme Court, it's pretty much they read those briefs. They don't do all of this trial stuff that's happened before here. And so it, it's just more an up or down thing. So we don't want this to be an up or down thing. There's so much more to it. And so this educating voters elevating the issue, keeping it in the face of voters, keeping it in the face of legislators is how we turn public sentiment. And now, I don't know about you, but I was there in, with Act 10, and we know that the vast majority of the public in the state of Wisconsin didn't want that to pass. And I just want to recommend a movie, Can You Hear Us Now? The new movie about uh, partisan gerrymandering and how it affected the 2018 election. Um, Sheila Plotkin, who you know what, Janelle Sheila Plotkin, she'd be a great guest for this. She, um, she has a website called We the Irrelevant, and she has done multiple open records requests on how voters feel about issues and how legislators vote. And it goes right back to what Tony said about legislators being beholden to money, um, where 90% of voters, so across the board, say, don't do that, like the lame duck legislation and they do it anyway. So sorry, I just Thank wanted you. to give you a little more on that. Thank you, Carlene. Any other questions for Tony and Marie? Steve? <clears throat> yes, I, um, I have not been to many of these meetings. In fact, this is, I think I was at one well, several months ago, and this is the first one in a long time. So maybe what I'm going to uh, propose here has already been, uh, Maybe it's already been done, but so there is a document that gives all the advantages and the reasons to have fair maps. It's all, this is all about honesty as far as I'm concerned. This is all about democracy and making sure that we run strongly and we're we're a better nation, a better state. And I'm wondering if anyone has taken that document and handed it to those various legislat legislators who all said, no, 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 and said, okay, Mr. Staffschult or Mr. Moses or Sommerfeld, whatever, this is why we think fair maps is necessary. And apparently you don't. So we would appreciate it very much if you would write a document telling us what's wrong with this. Has anyone ever done that? Have them put, hold their feet to the fire. Um. <clears throat> Can I, can I respond as part of the legislative team? Yes, um, in fact, uh, we reached out multiple times to the, the legislators in Western Wisconsin um, with this information and got no response from them. They wouldn't even uh, give us a, a second to say no and here's why. They just totally ignored our, our requests for um, why they wouldn't support fair maps. But I encourage you, please <laughs> continue, do that. Um, there's no reason why, why we can't try again. Yes, but contact the legislators. Maybe well, um, at this point, they'd be more willing to listen now that the election is behind them. Well, I, I would there say, are, there I would say to, to there's, there's a lot. That, okay, oh. Go ahead, Anne-Marie, you go. Oh, I was just thinking, like to build on Steve's idea, we've contacted them, but if, maybe if you could get maybe just a couple of constituents in each of those assembly areas 
and in the Senate and just make an appointment and you know show up with whatever and just have a conversation and ask them like Steve said like if this isn't important to you what is like you know and, and like you said I but I think well, in small groups we I don't know that we've shown up at their doors we're going to be doing lobby training in this in the coming into the spring because we know this legislation is going to be reintroduced in both of the chambers. We know Jeff Smith's gonna introduce it in the state Senate. We don't know yet who's gonna introduce it in the state assembly. But yes, we're gonna have uh, lobby training for folks to either virtually or in person lobby their legislators to number one, push for a hearing on the election committees in the various chambers and number two, co-sponsor, co-sign this legislation, because we know last time five Republicans did in the state assembly, zero in the state Senate. Great. So, yeah. that, do you know what that, he's going to, um, what bill he's going to put forward? Is it something that's already written and out there, or is he tweaking something? It's probably very, very, very similar to the Vining Hansen bill that was put, that was okay. introduced in 2019. And the reason why it's significant this time is it's because it's the budget cycle. And so there will have to be money in the budget for it. Um, so um, yeah, uh, he, I, I can ask him to, to give a copy. I have not done that, but I do know that he's, he hopes it'll be Senate bill one. Now we'll see, <laughs> we'll see if, if the, maybe in the, in the confusion of, of uh, Fitzgerald not being not being the head anymore. Maybe Roth will let it go through. Work on that, would you tell me? Yeah, actually get a um, hearing, right? Yeah. Uh, let's take, I, I think, let's see if there's one more person that has a question because we're running out of time. Um, does anybody else have a question for about the People's Map Commission for Anne Marie or Tony? Well, I, I, I want to just continue a little bit more. They, when they give, I, they gave a non-response. They ignored it. To me, that was a response. Right. That's why we put them down as no, Steve. I think there's well, a will for it. No, 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 no. They gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we can't let them off the hook. I think what we need to do is we need to go back to them and say, look it, we're we're giving you this document that gives why we need for fair maps. And we're giving you an a, a reason to answer. And if you don't answer, we're gonna put our reason in the paper, what's good about this. And we presented it to these various legislatures and we want the public to know that that legislator did not was silence. They did not answer and expose them as being Steve, thank you very much. Yeah, right. I think that's a very good idea and um, we will continue to do that. And as Anne said, we encourage you to do it as well. Um, is I, I just wanna give an opportunity if there's one more person that has a question for Anne Marie or Tony. If not, I'm gonna move on because we are a little bit behind already. Um, okay. So I, Carlene is next. Carlene, can you give us a, a quick um, update on what the Fair Maps Coalition is doing in Wisconsin? Oh, you're on mute. Thank you. Could you go back one slide? This one? Yes. So tonight there will be a panel of local folks from the third congressional district. This is one of the things that we're doing for each one of the hearings, doing a panel of local folks who can talk about how gerrymandering affects the region. Uh, for the third congressional district, Amy Dummer of the Driftless Women's Network and who now works for SEIU and was very involved in um, the, um, the Monroe County and Trepolo County uh, re uh, redistricting referendums will be one of the guests, Amanda White Eagle, who ran for the 96th Assembly District seat and lost. And Wendy Sue Johnson, who is a lawyer in Eau Claire, was on the school board and was a Whitford plaintiff, will be the panelists. Next Saturday, or this Saturday, the 14th, the one this week, 
at 3 p.m. There'll be testimony training um, and there, there are links in both of those spots to be able to register for those. Um, and then, um, where are we? <laughs> Sorry, I'm just gonna put the links in the chat because oh, okay. people can't click yeah. on their screen. So those two things are definitely happening and we've been following up with the people who uh, testify at these hearings. Um, I was really super proud that um, in the hearing in the 5th Congressional District last time, nine of the 12 people who testified were involved with the Fair Maps team in the 5th Congressional District, either in Washington County, Jefferson County, or Waukesha County. So that was like, yes, we can, we can tell that we're, having, we're making a difference because these are people who have been involved like you are. Um, and then the only other thing I have to share is that um, on Thursday of this week, the lead team of the Fair Maps Coalition is uh, meeting to, uh, to talk about strategy in the next phase of the campaign as we move forward after this election, knowing what we know now, who's won, where we stand with the governor. Uh, I was going to fill in on the, the, this lawsuit at this point, just to say that we have a a meeting this afternoon to talk about talking, to develop talking points to share with folks around uh, the things that you want to just include. And as I said, I'll, I'll get that information to Janelle. Um, and I, I just have to just express so much gratitude, so, so much gratitude. And I think both Anne-Marie and Tony alluded to this in their roles on the commission, and then just in general. Um, before, so yesterday was one year since the Oregon Area Progressives hosted the Fair Maps for Wisconsin Summit for grassroots organizers who were interested in this one year. It is amazing what we have accomplished at a grassroots level in one year. 20 countywide referendums, nine in April, 11 on uh, last Tuesday, one week ago, and 20 municipal referendums. It's just astounding. And I think that we should, we should pat ourselves on the back, take a big breath, reflect, rest a little bit, celebrate that. But yes, there's a lot of work. <laughs> this is far from over. So get yourself ready because uh, we need to really hit the ground running when it comes to January, when the new session starts. And we need to be really focused and coordinated in our strategy. So thank you for all your work. This is an amazing group. And I so appreciate all you're doing and all your support. Big shout outs. Big, big, big shout outs. Thank you, Carlene. Um, so true. I think um, it's great to see the energy from this group. It's great to know there are other groups across the state that are doing the same thing. And um, we're making progress. So I wanted to give you a little um, overview of what's going to come next, but I realized I didn't take a moment to thank Anne-Marie and Tony. Sorry, the time always goes by so fast, but thank you very, very much for being here. Um, the presentation was really helpful and um, really, really appreciate your perspectives and your, your energy on the commission. Um, so um, what I'd like to know from you is how you would like to be involved going forward. So we will continue to have monthly meetings. We will continue to have teams that meet between the monthly meetings, but the teams are probably going to be pretty different in 2021 than they were in 2020. In 2020, we had teams based on writing, videos, um, you know, county referendums, all that. So we're going to switch a little bit because there are three main pillars that we see, and this, this will all be fine-tuned in December based on what the Fair Maps Coalition comes up with, and also based on who of you want to be um, step up for some leadership in, in our group and see how, how that can come about. But the initial thinking is that moving forward, we'll have three big pillars to our group. The first pillar is supporting the People's Map Commission. So, um, monthly hearings, being sure that we have a great presence in those and that we're helping um, the best voices being elevated and really good ideas. Uh, that's this month and that's in January for our group. 
Um, there, we've come up with an idea for a public art project to help when the People's Map Commission map comes out and the legislators map comes out to have big scale um, art projects that superimpose both maps and show what the difference is. And that would be a really great way of getting a lot of people involved, um, maybe even teachers and obviously artists um, and, and grassroots activists, people like us. Um, so there's that idea, but we need to really strengthen that because as both Anne-Marie and Tony pointed out, um, this is all ad advisory, like there, it's just a, pro it's, it'll be a proposal, their map, it'll be really powerful because of the way that it was developed, but our job will be to really make sure that people understand what the differences are and how important it is. So that is one of the pillars that we'll have in 2021. Another pillar will be um, when the law is introduced. So Carlene mentioned that there'll be some lobbying training that'll be really helpful for us because we're really going to need to contact all of these legislators. And as Anne said, they're very good at ignoring. Um, there's a lot of willful ignorance at play. And so we're gonna have to find really great strategies to um, overcome that and use the pressure of all of these referendums of all of the people that are engaged and want change um, to make sure that the legislators can't ignore us. And then the third pillar will be referendums. So I'm super grateful for the team in Polk County, um, Carolyn, and I can't see if Irene, maybe, I don't know if there's anyone else on this call that's already working on that. Um, but super grateful they're already looking ahead to see if we can have a referendum in Polk County. I know Craig is investigating in Buffalo. Um, maybe we can pull something off in Pepin. So I think uh, it'd be great for us to continue making that map that's behind Carlene more and more orange or more and more purple. Sorry, you can see that there's some white there in our area. And could we, could we make that a little darker? Um, so that'll be our third pillar. So if, um, if you'd like to be involved just as a participant or if you'd like to have a leadership role, if you have ideas of how this could play out, strategies that we can use, um, drop me a note. Um, you get all of the reminders from the meeting from me. So just reply to one of those um, or give me a call. And uh, I would love to discuss that with you. And then we'll be talking about that in, in November and December and then just hitting the ground running in January. So if you'd like to reach out to me, the sooner the better. And um, we'll be structuring that, that um, our, our team for 2021, given the new goals that we'll have. And I have heard from a few people, I'm glad Carlene mentioned how um, excited she is and how much progress was made in 2020, because we may feel like it's just these little minuscule steps that take so much effort. But when you look back, you can realize actually quite a bit happened. And I would just like to point out that things always seem, this is Nelson Mandela telling us who had a far greater task ahead of him as we have ahead of us, that um, things always seem impossible until they're done. And so um, let's not be discouraged by the fact that the legislators aren't listening to us. Let's not be too concerned about the fact that the People's Map Commission isn't a shoe in um, for the maps that they, that they develop. Um, we, the reason we exist, the reason that we're doing the work we do is to make sure that these things have a positive outcome and um, we can do it. There's been far, far greater change that has happened in the world and it's people like us working towards it that make it happen. So thank you for your energy. And I just wanted us all to believe that gerrymandering will end in Wisconsin. We don't know exactly how and we don't know exactly when yet, but it will end and it'll be thanks to groups like ours and um, people on the commission and Carlene and um, a lot of great people with great insights and great energy across the state. So let's keep the energy moving forward. Um, so thankfully, uh, a lot of my announcements have already been covered in quite a bit of depth. So the League of Women Voter event, um, please go. If you want to help submit comments from our group, send me an email and I'll organize that. It's the deadline is by the end of November. So if you want to be part of a WWWNVD group, um, send me a note by the end of the week and then I'll schedule a meeting for next week and we'll put those comments together. So encourage you to attend that. 
As Carlene said, the People's Map Commission hearing for a third congressional district. So the hearing is on Thursday. I think you said it was at 5.30. Someone said it was at 5.30 um, p.m. And you can go to the People's Map Commission website to access that. And then tonight is the panel discussion, right, Carlene, at 7 p.m. And I put those links in the chat and I'll put them in the follow-up email as well. And then testimony training, testimony training is on Saturday, November 14th. That's this Saturday at 3 p.m. So please participate in those ways um, during this month. I would like to suggest that our next meeting will be on Tuesday, January 5th. Um, and we're gonna move our meeting to the evening because a lot of people who have regular jobs aren't able to attend this 9 a.m. call. Um, so let's plan on that. If Tuesday is not an option for you, just drop in the chat real quick what day of the week works better for you. Um, I know that it's, it's hard to find a date that works for everyone, but Tuesday has seemed to work well. So if this does not work for you, just put a date in the chat that works for you and we'll, we'll see what we can do. These meetings are always recorded, so you're always welcome to, to come back to them later on our website. Um, so with that, I just want to say a big thank you. This is a picture taken during our Dunn County event to spread the word about the, the gerrymandering um, in Wisconsin to help people vote no on the referendum. So big thank you for all of you and all of the great work that you've put in in 2020. And I'm really pumped about moving into 2021 with um, a lot more knowledge under our belts, a lot more experience. And I think we're going to accomplish great things together. So if yes, yes, yes. So take yourselves off mute if you can. And let's um, say in unison, fair maps for Wisconsin and we will um, end the call. So one, two, three, fair maps, fair maps and for Wisconsin. Wisconsin. All right, thank you so much, everyone. Take good care. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Janelle.